Hello. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Karen Rudman, and I am joining the JCC Virtual Fitness to teach you Pilates. I have been teaching for 16 years, but this is my first Zoom experience, and I'm delighted to join you on this day. I have a few notes. For those of you who know me, I teach very meticulously, and a big focus is on form. Um, I have an extensive background in exercise science and Pilates, so I'm about to bring all that to you right now. With me, I have the following. A resistance band, a band with handles, one weight, which can also be substituted for a water bottle that you can hold in your hand, and I have a mat behind me. I'm gonna not use music today, and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start standing. So here we go. Have a great time. Here we are standing. I want you to stand with your pelvis in neutral, your hip bones and pubic bone level, your ribs over your pelvis, your shoulders pulled back with your arms by your side. We're gonna inhale from the nose and exhale to bring the arms all the way up without changing the position of our body and bring the arm all the way down and create that circle again. Inhale up through the nose, exhale through the mouth, arms down, and again, inhale up and exhale down. And as you're creating these arm movements, nothing is moving other than your shoulders. Now let's bring the arms up with an inhale. And on an exhale, you're gonna drop your right arm down and bring your left arm up to the ceiling and do a gentle side bend. Then pull your arm up to the ceiling and level your arms parallel to the floor. Opposite arm up to the ceiling, exhale, side bend. And a good image is to think about your body in two walls so that you just stay in this one plane. Again, inhale up and exhale. Take your top arm and reach forward, curling your spine forward, taking that arm straight up to the ceiling, leveling your body between two walls and bringing your arms parallel to the floor. Other side. Big inhale up, big exhale as you side bend, top arm over, curling the spine forward, bring the arm back up, aligning your body with that same image of two walls, and bring the arms back down. Now we're gonna add on to this. Keeping pelvis level, ribs over pelvis, arms by your side, bring them parallel to the floor, one arm up. We're gonna bring this top arm over, then bring it down to the floor, keeping the abdominals tight, bringing the opposite arm forward, leveling the spine, and bringing that arm parallel to the floor. Again, then inhale up, exhale down and around, other arm forward, and back down. We're just gonna circle the arms up and down. And then I'm gonna grab my roller as a prop in case you want something for support. You can use nothing and just focus on your balance. So we're gonna stand on one foot, and as you stand on your standing leg, you wanna tighten that corresponding glute so that you have extra stability. We're just gonna lift one leg up and circle the hip around. As you're doing this, you're gonna notice there's a lot of abdominal engagement to keep your body still in one space, and then we'll reverse the leg in the opposite direction. Keep breathing actively, and then we'll place the leg down. I'm gonna bring the roller over to the other side. Again, you can just stand on one foot using your balance, but I'm gonna use this prop. You can use anything, a chair, it doesn't matter. Just something to help you stay upright. We're gonna stand in that other leg. We're gonna tighten the glute so we're nice and stable. And we're just gonna circle the leg around just to open up the hip. Again, ribs over pelvis with active breathing. I'm gonna place this foot down. Once again, I'm standing, pelvis is level, ribs over pelvis, arms up. We're gonna blend these two moment, movements together. One arm down, forward, down and around, opposite arm. Bring the body back up, and again, other side, down and around, and back up. Then we'll stand on one leg, once again, using the roller or a chair, just to open the hips, and reversing the leg. Switching to the other side. And then reversing. Then we're gonna come back to our mat. I'm gonna have you sit down. If you find that you are feeling tight through your hips, I want you to bend your knees. 
Make sure that your spine is nice and upright, that you're not rolling back. You're getting ready to go into spine stretch forward. So the arms are gonna be parallel to the floor. You're gonna inhale from your nose, and as you exhale, you're gonna round your spine, bringing your fingers towards your toes. Then you're gonna bring your ribs back, stacking the spine and coming up tall. From the side, this is what it looks like. Spine is nice and tall. Remember, you don't want to be rolling back. So if your hamstrings are tight, you're going to soften the knees. Arms are parallel to the floor. Inhale from your nose and exhale to round the spine. And then pull your ribs back up so you're stacked. Then adding on, take your hands behind your body and lift your heart to the ceiling. Pull the ribs in, keeping everything nice and neutral. Let's blend these together. Inhale forward. Exhale back up, hands behind the body, lift the heart. And one more time, spine stretch forward. Come back up, hands behind, lift the sternum to the ceiling. Now we're gonna change the position. We're gonna take the right leg, cross it over, opening the hip, right leg, left arm. It's gonna pull the thigh into the body. Spine rotates towards that leg. Place one hand behind your rear and pull that leg in. Lift that back arm up, rotate the spine to face me. Take the leg so it's parallel to the floor. Keep your pelvis nice and level, just round the spine forward to get a deeper stretch through the hip. Stack the ribs up to, to the pelvis coming back up. Leg in front, other side. Cross it over, pull the leg close to the body, rotate the spine towards the back leg, Pull the thigh into the chest so you have extra resistance to support this position. Release, coming back forward, taking the leg, opening it up. Once again, you're just gonna gently come forward. And as you do so, you'll notice the increased stretch through the, rib, through the hips. Come back tall. We're gonna lie down on our, on our mats. And when I refer to the, the terminology of neutral pelvis, I just wanna remind you that the hip bones and the pubic bone are level. So it's not this or that, it's actually a neutral environment, the way the spine and the pelvis come together. That environment does not change as you lie on your back. So let's go ahead and do that. And when you're here, you're just looking up to the ceiling. So once again, you've got that neutral spine, your hands are down by your side, and you're gonna lift the left leg up so it's perpendicular to the floor. Taking a breath, you're gonna engage your deep abdominals, lift the right leg up, and now your legs are in a tabletop position or a 90-90. Relax the shoulders, feeling the fingertips travel towards the heels, and just tap one leg down at a time. Relaxing the neck, but just feeling how the weight of the legs challenges your core stability as you tap, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. <clears throat> Take your hands behind your thighs. You're gonna bring your feet to the floor while you nod your chin. Touch your feet to the floor, pull the backs of the thighs to a seated position. This is called the assisted roll up. We'll roll through the lower back, gently placing the spine onto the mat into our 90-90 or tabletop legs. Once again, hands by your sides, reach your fingertips towards your heels, exhale as you tap, and tap. So if you feel very stable in this position, you can actually reach the leg for a little bit more of a challenge. So once again, your options are to tap. The closer the foot is to the rear end, the easier, or to reach, which creates a little bit more demand. So we're gonna go for six and five, and four, and three, and two, and one. Then the knees are right over the hips. We hold the backs of the thighs. We bring the feet to the floor while we nod the chin, touch the feet to the floor, and sit up nice and tall. From here, I'm gonna grab a resistance band, and you can just use your arms. It doesn't matter. You can just pull like so. So I'm holding this band with about 12 inches, this is an easy band, it's not too heavy. We're just gonna pull that apart to open the chest. So exhale and inhale, exhale and inhale. I'm gonna to turn to the side so you can see that I'm just pulling my shoulder blades together, just like so. 
just getting a nice open chest and feeling the mid back really begin to work and get some heat back there. Now from here, I'm gonna release the band. Here I am in a seated position just like I was a moment ago. I'm gonna hold the band but take it underneath my legs and then pull it apart so that actually will help create more stability through the shoulder girdle. Roll all the way down. The knees are in a tabletop position and the head is resting on the mat. If you're able to, I'm gonna ask you to nod your chin and lift your head off the mat and retract your chin so you feel a lot of deep work in, into the upper back and you're gonna reach your legs forward. And as you reach your legs forward, I want you to pull your band apart or just pull your arms apart. Exhale and inhale. 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 Release the band, hands behind the, the legs, touch your feet to the floor and sit up tall. Bring your arms so they're parallel to the floor. And from here, I want you to pull, feel your abdominals sink towards your spine and roll your spine halfway back. Bring one arm up and bring it back down. So what we're focusing on right here is the engagement of the abdominals. Back is flexed, so it's in stretch. But as the arms reciprocate in this pattern, you're gonna feel all the stabilization that's required to maintain this position. So we'll go six and five and four and three and two and one. Now bring the arms parallel to the floor. Make sure that your chin is gently retracted. Roll the spine, touching the lowest point first, and then keep your head in this position so that you could actually put a fist between your chin and your chest. Take your arms parallel to the floor, lift them up and press them down. Now you can certainly put your head down on the mat if you wish, that's up to you. You have to make choices that best suit you. This is the Pilates 100, breathe them for five. And on the exhale, we're just gonna change the position of the legs. Inhale for five, exhale firmly. That's 20, inhale one, two, three, four, five. Exhale one, two, three, four, 30. Two, three, four, five. Exhale one, two, three, four, 40. Two, three, four, five. Out, two, three, four, 50. Two, three, four, five. Out, two, three, four, 60. Two, three, four, five. Out, two, three, four, 70. Two, three, four, five. Out, two, three, four, 80. Two, three, four, five, out, two, three, four, 90. Two, three, four, five, out, two, three, 100. Bring the upper spine to the mat. Place one foot down so it touches the mat and the second. And once again, reposition the pelvis so your hip bones and hip bone are level. You can rock your pelvis back and forth, hands by your side. Using the band, if you wish, you can pull it apart to engage the upper back so it's nice and stable or just plant your hands by your side. From here, I just want you to think about your lower back curling under and releasing. So we're actually getting ready for a bridge. And as we do that, we're gonna engage the abdominals, then lift the lower back up very methodically and create a long line between the knees and the shoulders. Then place your upper back down, descending with a lot of control. You'll feel that lower back curve as you come back to neutral. Inhale from your nose, breathe out from your mouth like you're blowing through a straw. Lift the spine so it's in a long line between the knees and the shoulders. Hold here if you wish, but if you wanna add on, I'm gonna ask you to lift your left leg up about an inch and then bend the knee so it's over the hip. Place the foot onto the mat and relax. Breath in from the nose, Exhale to lift the right leg up just a little bit. Then lift the knee further so it's closer to you. Place the foot on the mat and then melt the spine down, upper spine to lower spine. Stay there if you like, but if you want to add on, here we go. Breath in from the nose. Exhale to engage your abdominals, peel the spine up. Create a long line between the knees and the shoulders. Once again, that left leg, the foot lifts barely then the knee comes so it's over the hip. Reach the leg forward, up to the ceiling, and lower down. Knee into you, forward, up to the ceiling, and lower down. And as you're engaging in this movement, your right side is completely still. 
You'll feel that glute really engaged to hold your pelvis in one level place. And again, we bring the knee in, forward, straight to the ceiling and down, two to go, in, forward, straight up and down, and last time, in, forward, straight up and down. Now we're gonna bend this knee and place that foot on the mat and melt, feel the lower back curve coming back to neutral. Reorganize the shoulders, pull the band apart, or plant your hands into the mat. Relax the neck, breath in from the back, Exhale from the mouth, peel the lower spine up. Create a long line once again. We're now on the right foot, so we lift it up just a little. Then we bring the knee closer to us. We bring that leg forward, it goes to the ceiling and down. So there's a few. We blend, knee flex, extend, and down. In, forward, straight up and down, that's two. In, forward, straight up and down, that's three. In, forward, straight up and down, that's four. In, forward, straight up and down, and last time. In, forward, straight up and down. Let's bend that knee, go one last time. Place it on the mat, relax the lower ribs, feel the lower back curve, and now bring your arms up to the ceiling. They're perpendicular to the floor. So choose right to left or left to right, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna choose my right leg, and then take my left arm up. From here, we're gonna reach both the way from the center and come back. So one leg and one arm go away from the center, and this is called dead bug. So we extend and we come back, making sure that knee goes over the hip and not past. Now, if you're interested in making this a little bit more challenging, I'm gonna pause here, have you nod the chin, Lift the head, pull the chin inward. So this is an option. Flex and return. Flex, return. Flex, return last time. Now let's come back, place the foot on the mat, hand by your side, and bring the spine back. Let's switch. Opposite and opposite. Starting with head, with head neck, and shoulders on the mat. We reach away and we come back. And this would be what I would call level one, always adjusting how far your arms and legs go to make sure that you do not engage your back, you're just using your limbs away from the center to create a lot of abdominal work. From here, I'm gonna add nine in the chin, lifting the head if that's your choice. We've got six to go, five to go, four to go, always exhaling when the limbs are away from the center, two to go, and last time, we're here, hands by your side, foot comes back down, spine comes back. Inhale, exhale firmly, engage your abdominals, lift one leg up, the knees over the hip, keep everything still, opposite leg up, take your hands behind your thighs, touch your feet to the floor, and then pull in, adding on. I'm gonna have you grab a water bottle, I'm gonna use a weight. Holding it in one hand. The first thing I'd like you to do is sit, making sure you bend your knees if you find your hamstrings challenging the position of your spine, and just hold this arm in front and bring it to the side. When you do so, you're gonna find the opposite side of the torso really has to work so you're not shifted, and bring the arm forward. So let's just play around, keeping everything nice and still. So we'll add on by bringing the arm up to the ceiling and back down and bringing it forward. Let's try that one more time before we switch. Now let's bring this arm forward, switching, and once again, we stay perfectly still, but the weighted object is gonna begin to challenge the core stability here. So our job is to just move that arm and keep everything still. You can actually stay here if you wish, but if you'd like to add on, I'm gonna have you hold the weight with both arms, bring it in front of the chest, bend your knees, and go into a gentle half row back. Pick an arm, it doesn't matter. Keep the wrist neutral and bring the arm up and down. So the spine is really in stretch. The abdominals are working to hold that position. We've got two in this with the arm moving parallel and then we bring it out. Then we bring it forward. 
and out and forward and out and forward and out and forward then up switching the arm so once again it's down and up keeping your gaze fixed forward so that the position of the head and neck do not change then bringing this arm to the side always adjusting whatever you need to do so that you're not compromising your motion and the position of the back as well as the abdominal engagement then we're going to bring the arm forward I'm changing the position of the weight so that I'm holding them both sides. So if you have a water bottle, you hold it at both ends and roll all the way down and bring the arms up to the ceiling. From here, we're going to roll up. So the first thing we do is lower the arms. Then we nod the chin and lift the head and retract the chin. Feel the ribs pull in. When you're seated, bring the arms up to the ceiling. Lower the arms to chest level and then roll back down very carefully, descending with control. Arms up. Inhale from your nose. Exhale to lower the weight. Look forward, retract the chin. Peel the spine all the way up. Hold. Take the weight in one arm, opposite hand by your side, bend the knees, and go into a half rollback. Arms out to the side. It comes forward. It goes out. It comes up. Out forward, out, up. This will be the final time. Then the arm comes up to the ceiling. We switch, everything stays still. The arm goes out, it comes forward, out, up. That's one, out, forward, out. That's two, out, forward, out, straight up. Straighten your legs, hold the weight with both hands, roll through the spine, keep the arms up. Inhale, exhale, nodding the chin. Pause, fill your sternum, pull you to a seated position, bring the arms up. Flex the lower spine, lower the arms. Peel the spine down, feeling gravity, really trying to make it so that you come down quickly, but work against that urge all the way up. And one final time, arms parallel, chest level, roll through the spine and then lie on your side. From here, I'm gonna explain the concept of scouring. Scouring is when you open your hip out to the side, then slide the leg forward with the kneecap facing the ceiling and pull the, the, the leg back in. So I'm gonna stand up for you to see. All it is is basically, I'm pretending like I'm lying down. You open the leg up, slide it forward with the kneecap facing forward and back up. So when we lie down on our back, which we're gonna do right now, we're gonna scour the hips right and left side and then go into a one leg circle. I'm gonna grab a band to show you a few modifications. So I have my band next to me. Once again, we're seated. You always want to honor the position of the spine. So if the spine is neutral, the lower back curve is present. We roll through, so we're rounding the spine. We're descending with control. Now we're on our back. We're going to take the left leg and pull the knee in. So the heel is towards the sitting bone. We open the knee to the side of the room without lifting the opposite hip. Glide the leg forward and slide the knee back in. So you're making like a, a diamond shape as you open and scour and just mobilize that hip. Let's try one more on this side. Now let's hold that leg straight. Let's pull the other leg in, so now the heel is close to the opposite sitting bone. Open the knee, bring the leg forward, kneecap up. And again, down and around on two. The heel slides in, the knee rotates out. The leg becomes straight with the kneecap facing forward. And we'll try one more. And here's the last one. It doesn't matter which leg you choose, but wh whichever one you decide to use, you're gonna pull one leg in so the heel is close to the sitting bone, keeping pelvis nice and neutral, abdominals engaged, lift the leg up to a tabletop, and then bring the leg up to the ceiling. If you have tight hips, the position of your leg may be here, or it may be who knows where, but my point is, Make sure that you are not compromising anything and you just honor the fact that your hamstring might be tight or your hip flexor might be tight and you might even want to soften the knee. 
Ideally, I'd like a straight leg. For starters, we're gonna bring the leg out. As the leg goes away from the center, feel the opposite hip really engage, opposite side of the torso, and bring the leg back up. These are called tic tocs, and as the leg goes out, you're gonna feel a lot of work because gravity is acting on it, and the weight of the leg is also a challenge. So we're gonna actually increase the range by crossing over. So it goes out and over to the midline. Now let's bring that leg back up. Once again, we're in a 90 degree angle. Let's just lower that leg down. This was similar to our dead buck. The lower the leg, the harder and more demanding. Let's bring the leg up and blend these all together. Let's bring the leg to the midline, lower down, bring it back out and bring it back up. So we're basically creating this circle. As your leg goes into this oval shape, I want you to relax everything. Plant your hands by your side. They will give you extra support. Let's try one more. To review modifications, you can bend your knee, which will make it a little bit easier. It doesn't matter. You have to pick whatever works for you. Let's try three more in this direction. Two more. And last one. So for purposes of demonstration, I'm gonna show you how a flex band is very helpful. Switch your leg, pull the leg in, lift the leg to a tabletop position, and before you straighten it, I'm gonna have you take your band, place it around the arch of the foot, separate the band so it's even on both sides, pull the elbows by your side, and hold just looking at the top of your foot. This band will support the weight of the leg, so that when you bring it over and back, it's actually easier. You no longer have to stabilize the weight of the leg. So on this side, I'm just showing you how you can use a flex band or resistance band to support. And we'll review what we just did by lowering down and bringing it back up. So those are the four points of our one leg circle, a classic Pilates mat exercise. We'll go in and around, and again two. So make sure that you're just keeping your elbows nice and stable, and we'll try two more in this direction. And last one, let's reverse. So we'll bring the leg out, making sure shoulders are stable, pelvis is stable on two, on three, on four, on five, six. From here, I'm gonna have you bend the knee, release the band, pull the other heel into the sitting bone and pause. So now your legs are in a tabletop position. You can keep your head, neck, and shoulders down, but we're getting ready to go into the ab series, the classic four exercises in the Pilates net repertoire. Single leg stretch is basically a reciprocation of the legs. For those of you who might be new to class, when you extend one leg, the weight of the leg will be the most challenging part. So you wanna modify that range of motion. From here, you can stay right here if you wish, when the leg is closest to you, if it's your left leg, it would be your left arm, it'll go right below your knee, and your right arm would go toward your ankle, and you'll pull down. This lower leg is parallel to the floor. Then as you pull that leg forward, you would reciprocate and do the exact same thing with the opposite leg. This will actually give you support. If you choose to use your head, neck, and shoulders, you would nod your chin, lift your head off the mat, and retract the chin, and keep this lower leg parallel to the floor. Then you would reciprocate, keeping everything very linear. So we're gonna do eight more. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Back to tabletop. I'm gonna place my head, neck, and shoulders down just to show you the next part. In the scissors, the legs are straight or soften the knees if you need to. You'll lower one leg down, and you're just gonna give it a little press at the bottom, a little pulse. Then you reciprocate, press one leg down with a little press. So it's exhale, 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 exhale. I'm gonna pause here, nod the chin, lift the head off the mat, retract the chin, and gently pull the calf toward the body, relaxing the shoulders. It's a little more challenging with, that, with your head off the mat, Press, little pulse towards the extended leg, two and three. Just maintain that fist distance between the chin and the chest, four and five and six and seven and eight. 
Let's bend the knees and place the spine onto the mat. Take your hands outside your knees. From here, I'm gonna have you just reach your arms over the head. Just keep everything still, but just feel what, what it, the demand as you bring your arms over the head. Then I'm gonna have you pause with your hands by your knees and then bring the legs forward. Again, recognizing the lower the legs, the more demanding that'll be. These are the elements of double leg stretch. But in double leg stretch, they work simultaneously where the arms go over the head, the legs are forward, and then you come back with the knees over the hips. So you extend and you're together. Extend and then you're together. If you wish to add the head, neck, and shoulders, which will increase how difficult this is or how challenging, you nod the chin, lift the head, retract the chin, and you reach away and come back. Always being mindful to where you're at today, knowing that you want to feel your abdominals and just let your back just relax, no engagement there. Three, two, and one. Now I'm gonna have you pause here with your hands behind your knees, assisted roll up, touch your feet to the floor, and sit up tall. Let's talk about rotation. In the Pilates method, there's a great emphasis on spinal rotation. So I'm gonna have you sit once again, prop something on your rear sitting bones if you need to, but just take your hands on the top of your pelvis. Then bring one hand by the sternum and the next by your sternum. With your elbows out, you're gonna rotate your body to one side and then bring your spine to the center. So it's an active rotation to one side and an active rotation back to the center. When you're rotating, I want you to make sure that when you choose one side that you're not rolling the hip in that direction. You just honor whatever range of motion you have today. Then you're bring, gonna bring your arms parallel to the floor. Your legs are hip distance apart. I'm gonna choose my right arm to rotate towards the center and then pause for a moment to look at my feet because if I piped my hip, I've gone too far then actively rotate. So when you're rotating your spine, you're just isolating the spine itself without involving the hips. Spinal rotation and back. And this is a spine twist. We can add a prop. Once again, this time I'll use the, the band with the handles just to add some work of the upper body. So you can use any kind of band. My elbows are bent. You're gonna reach the arms out and come back in. So when you extend, you're gonna feel work through the shoulder girdle, and then you'll rotate your spine, come back to the center, and then the elbows in. Reach out, spinal rotation, to the center, and back in. And again, reach out, center, and one last time before we add on. Adding on, I'm gonna release the band, put everything back where it was a moment ago, I'm going to reposition myself. This is the same position. As we move into the saw, we rotate the spine. The front arm reaches towards that corresponding leg. Pull the back side up so you're stacked and come back to the center. Rotate over, flex forward, come back up and to the center. When you flex forward, Pay attention that you're not coming from your hips, that you're curling your ribs forward. You're reaching your back arm to stack your spine. So we rotate, flex the spine forward, pull your spine tall, rotate back to the center. Progressing into the saw, we'll do one more, one more on each side. And last time. I'm gonna take a moment here to have you bring one leg across like we did in, our, in the beginning of our class, pull that thigh in, take your back arm behind your hip just to continue to open up the hips and help improve the, the mobility of the upper spine. Come back to center, leg is forward, switch, rotate again, back and forward. So this is a prelude to the oblique crisscross, which is the last of the four mat series the mat exercises of the abdominal series. So let's return back to the mat in a supine position. I'm gonna keep my head, neck, and shoulders lifted, interlace my fingers, 
Elbows are visible in my periphery. Rotate the spine to one knee and bring the opposite leg forward. Then rotate the spine back. The important piece in this exercise is to make sure that you're not just moving your elbows, but keeping your elbows still as you mobilize your spine. And then simultaneously reach the opposite leg forward. So here we go. Let's do eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Back to center, hands behind the knees, clamp the feet to the floor, and come back up. I'd like to emphasize one very important thing. When you're doing your oblique crisscross, it's not moving your elbows, it's moving your spine and then flexing forward. So you can practice, practice this on your own. Okay, moving on. I'm gonna use my foam roller, just because, for those of you who know me, I love my foam roller, but I'm gonna to explain to you why. When you have a roller, it really helps increase a range of motion. So I'm gonna place my roller to my right side and go into what we call a Z-sit. A Z-sit is when one knee is in, the leg in front of you, the hip is rotated out, and the back leg is rotated in. This is what that looks like. We're progressing into the mermaid. So the roller is gonna really help me go to the side, which is the direction of my motion. I have a gentle hand on the roller. The opposite arm is parallel to the floor. It goes up to the ceiling. And the same image that we talked about in the beginning of our class of the bodies in two walls, we roll and then we pull back. So if I wasn't using the roller, it would be the same thing. But there would be no compression in that shoulder. Really light arm and come back up. And let's do three right here where we exhale all the way over. Inhale back up and exhale over and come back up. And on this last one, I'm gonna show you a very nice transition where the arm comes up and you rotate towards the corner and then come forward as you roll to the side. So this is very much like our warm up. One more just for showing. Then we'll come back to center. So we reposition the legs, same thing on the opposite side. The front leg, the hip is rotated out. The back, the hip is rotated in. Some folks have difficulty with mobility in their hips, and if that's the case, I recommend that you take a pillow or roll your mat behind so that you can actually keep your hip open and not fight whatever tightness you might be feeling. Okay, shoulders are open, gaze is forward, lightness on the roller or on the floor, on the mat, it doesn't matter. Arms parallel, up to the ceiling, into our side bend, and then actively coming back up. And again, big exhale, blowing out the air, and inhaling to come back up, and exhaling up, and inhaling up. And on, uh, once again, that nice transition where we roll over, rotate, and gently reach. So I have a very light hand on that roller, rotating back. And the emphasis here is to really make sure that there's lots of mobility through the torso in all directions. A very important thing to do. And back we go. Okay, so now the emphasis becomes on the spine. Whenever the spine lifts up to the ceiling, the spine is working in extension. So I'm gonna have you go on your belly. And some of you may even wanna choose something like a pillow to put under your pelvis if you feel any sort of straining in your back. Because when you're on the mat, it's just you and the floor or you and the mat. So we're gonna be in this position Shoulders are relaxed and the elbows are close to the body and we're getting ready to go into swan. So position your body so your nose is down and just follow the cues. Imagine there's a ball underneath your nose, just roll it forward and then press your forearms into the mat. Feeling the elbows get close to your heels and just lift the heart. And that's as tall as you're gonna go and then bring everything back down. So we roll that invisible ball, we press into the forearms, lift the sternum up, and we come all the way back down. And again, roll the ball, pull the elbows close to the body, and lift up. Now, if you'd like to add on, I'm gonna have you lift the forearms off the mat and bring them back down. Forearms up, forearms down. Forearms up, forearms down, and then bring everything back home. Let's review all the pieces. 
Roll the ball. Press the heel, the elbows down towards your heels or towards the lower body. Lift the arms up. I'm going to add on into Scarecrow where you reach the arms forward, bend the elbows back, place the arms down, and the spine returns. So we roll the ball, lift the torso, lift the arms. Reach the arms forward, bend the elbows back, place the forearms on the mat, and come down one final time. Roll the ball, lift the forearms. Reach the arms, bend the elbows back, and place the hands down. Now press into the heel of the hand towards the pinky finger, pull yourself tall, and sit back on your heels. This is called child's pose. In child's pose, I'd like you to pick one arm, it doesn't matter which, put it underneath the other, and keep the palm up in reach. So you've got this oppositional stretch, one arm forward and one arm across. Right here, I want you to imagine someone's pulling your arms in both directions, forward and back, forward and back, and forward and back. Then come back with both arms forward and sit back towards your heels. Let's switch. Opposite arm goes underneath, one arm is forward, one arm is back, and you're pulling forward and across one, forward and across two, forward and across three, and then come back. When you come back, you're gonna be in what we call quadruped, which is elbows, wrists and shoulders in one line, knees and hips in one line. The spine has all three curves, through the upper back, the neck, middle back, and lower back. Getting ready to go into cat, where we pull the abdominals into around the lower back, taking our time through the middle back, and then really engaging the abdominals to curl the spine. Releasing the lower back first, middle spine, press into the heel of the hand and the pinky, and just reach your, your sternum forward, and then come back to neutral. So we take this in segments, starting with the lower back curling, middle spine next, upper spine last, releasing, releasing, sternum forward and neutral. From here, I'm gonna have you just lift one knee up, just a little bit, just so you feel the work that's required of the leg that's maintaining on the ground. Put that knee down, lift it up just a little. That's the ticket right there. Then hold the leg and reach the leg behind you. Now look back and make sure that you're not rotated out, that you really have your hip bone facing the floor. Then bring the opposite arm forward. I'd like you to touch your toe and finger and reach it away. And when you're thinking, when you're engaging in this motion, you're thinking of fingers forward, foot behind, toes go away, fingers go away. And let's try one more. And then we'll hold this last one and we're gonna stay. If there's any sort of shaking, that's normal. It's just your body trying to navigate where you are, holding that position. Hand back, once again stacked, shoulders, elbows, and wrists. Let's go into a quick cat where we round the lower spine, middle spine, upper spine, hold. Lower spine, middle spine, sternum forward and neutral. Opposite leg, kneecap faces the floor. Foot comes away from the center and opposite arm as well. Touching toes and fingers, reaching them away. Toes and fingers, reaching them away. Toes and fingers, reaching them away. And one last time, and we're just gonna hold that right there. Hand back, knees back down, sitting back on the heels. This time I want your heels, the heel of the hand down and your fingers up, and just open and close your hands, just like so. And then come back up and turn around. Lie on your side. The first thing I'd like you to do is create a 90 degree angle between your forearm and your shoulder. Then take your free hand and touch your shoulder blade and pull the shoulder blade into the spine so you feel a lot of stability. Hold right here. You can stay here if you wish, or you can lie down and just create what I call an arm pillow. These are just choices. Keep your hip bones level and make sure the kneecap faces forward. Take your hand on the top of your, of your hip and hover the leg. Now reach it away and then lift the leg up. Lower the leg down. I like to count of one and two, hold, one and two and down. 
With your hand here, you're gonna feel all the muscles working to keep your leg in this position and working against gravity to bring it back down. So if you feel like this is too easy, a way to make it a little more challenging is to take your arm and bring it forward. Or if you need more help, place it in front. Now bring your leg up for a little bit of uh, variation. We're gonna bring it behind, align it and down. So it's up, loop brings the leg behind and forward. So it's up, behind, and forward. And some of you may know this is hot potato. Once again, you can bring your hand on the mat if you wish. These are just choices. The goal is stability and mobility here. Then bring the leg up, and I'd like you to go into small oval circles. Feel the side of the hip, front of the leg, back of the leg, working in all dimensions, all directions, and then reversing. Then we're going to pause here, help ourselves up, and go to the other side. So to review, if you're choosing to work from this position, which will be harder, You've got a 90 degree angle. The shoulder blade comes into the back so there's extra stability and you can work from this position. I'll, I'll show you on this side, in this position. So you're gonna lift the leg up just like so. One, two, one, two. This is significantly harder for lots of reasons, but we'll just leave it at that. And once again, you can bring the arm forward or down and then you go into hot potato. So the leg comes up and it goes behind, center, behind, center, behind. Always with an active breath, exhaling and inhaling. And let's try two more like here and one more. Then we're gonna come back home and come up on our knees. Take your hands on the top of your pelvis. Once again, understanding the relationship of the ribs stacked over the pelvis. I'm going to have you bring your left leg forward so that the knee is over the second toe. Lean forward into that leg and pull away from the hip so your torso is pulling you upright. My right leg is behind me, so it's going to be my right arm that's up to the ceiling, and the left arm is just going to rest. Pull up and forward to feel a tremendous stretch across your hip flexor, and then pull back up. So once again, we've got these 90 degree relationships of our flex leg in front, and come back up and let's switch. Stack pelvis, foot in front, hip knee, knee to second toe. Pull up, lean into it just a little bit. Corresponding arm is up to the ceiling. This hand is on the inside, up to the ceiling and a little bit forward and over to the midline. And back up and again. Now I'm going to have you come back into a kneeling position. See if you're able to hold your arms out to the side and bring one leg forward without shifting too much. And you can take your time. As you're going through this drill, which is more or less an agility drill, you can bring your arms up. You can hold a weighted object if you wish, all sorts of choices. Let's try six, five, four. Always trying to achieve that hip knee, second toe relationship. Three, two, and one. Stand up. Stand in the middle of your feet, which means that you've got equal weight between your big toe, baby toe, and heel. Take your hands on your thighs. Hinge your hips back and go into a squat. I've got my hands on my lower leg. From the side, it's a neutral spine. Bring your arms forward and out to the side. Thumbs face up, thumbs face up. Forward to the side. Forward to the side. Forward to the side. Let's try four to go. Four, three, two, and one. Take your hands on your shins and glide up. One more time, hips first, knees second. Thumbs face forward, forward to the side, forward to the side, forward to the side, and again, final two, 
Final one. Take your hands up now above your knees. Pull the tail underneath you. Release the tail. Pull the tail underneath you and release the tail. And last time, tail underneath you. Release the tail. Stand up tall. Have a seat on your mat. I hope you've enjoyed this class. Again, I'm Karen Rudman. I will continue to do these. I thank Allison, the JCC, for allowing me to participate with you. I hope you stay well, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.